Okay, I'm going to say uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm just going to give a little bit of a preamble as um, various members of the, the Prince William County community join our, uh, our webinar this evening. Uh, quick introduction, I'm, I'm Neil Beach. I'm the principal at Gainesville High School. Proud, proud to be the principal at Gainesville High School and happy that we're open, up and running, and, and obviously have students in our hallways. We've had a good start to the school year and uh, we're looking forward very much to, to uh, the next several weeks as we get to the second semester and, and obviously move through the end of the school year. Um, other people in the room with me right now, uh, Megan Pomfret's here. Do you want to say hi and introduce yourself, Megan? Hi, I'm Megan Pomfret. I'm the Director of School Counseling at Gainesville. Uh, Rob Doolin's here. Hi, Rob Doolin. I head up the Gifted Education Program at Gainesville High School. And uh, Robert Scott's here. Hi, right, good evening, folks. Thanks for stopping in. Um, I wanted to just mention before, as, as we get started before, in case I forget for later, uh, the four of us will do our best to answer your questions in the Q&A portion of the webinar. However, the very last slide has my email address on it. Uh, if, we, if for some reason we don't get to your question or we're not typing fast enough because it's just the four of us this evening, please shoot me an email and I'll set aside some time tomorrow or over the weekend and I will get back to you. Mr. Beach. Thank you. So that, that's, who, that's who you have for, for tonight's webinar. We would rather be face-to-face -face for, for I, I think, obvious reasons. We chose to go uh, virtually um, this evening. In hindsight, it's, it's worked out well for us with the Code Orange Day today. Um, so I'm glad everybody's able to, to join us in, in the webinar. Um, again, quick overview as far as the, the specialty program process and, and um, a statement that I'll make. Um, February 1 deadline is a hard deadline in, in Prince William County schools for students who wish to transfer from one school to another. Um, so I'm encouraging everybody to make sure that if you haven't already, you look at the application process and, and please don't wait till the last minute to submit uh, just in case you have technical difficulties of any sort. Uh, I'd hate for somebody to, to miss out on an opportunity to, to um, participate in a program because of missing a, you know, a, a deadline that could have been avoided. So please take a look at that early. Um, the second thing I'll say to uh, our parents, um, but also to our students is that this, if you're a rising ninth grade student and, and the parent of a rising ninth grade student, this feels like a huge decision. Where's my student gonna go? Or my child gonna go to high school? Um, they're difficult choices. And there are a lot of um, pieces of information that you're gonna be sifting through to try to make a, a good decision as a family. I mean this sincerely, I'm a Prince William County parent and I'll be happy to, for my two children to go to any one of our high schools. Any one of them will provide a, a high quality education for our students. Um, so the big idea behind specialty programs is that they offer students a chance to um, select coursework and, and maybe some add on features that really allow students to, to get excited in an area of academic interest. Um, Students should only look at a transfer program if, if it really is a passion of theirs, if academically it's an area of interest to, that they, they hope to go deeper and excel within. The other reason we have specialty program, programs is to, to add rigor at times. And, and many of the pathways that we'll talk about tonight, but certainly the specialty programs across the school division, some of them do add rigor and, and that can come with either additional pressure or workload. And that should be part of the conversation. Is this something that you're, you're interested in enough to, to spend extra time doing um, because of the increased rigor that, that it could provide for a student? Um, lots to choose from, lots of great programs and great high schools and Prince William County schools. Um, we're gonna do the best we can to, to fairly, uh, I'll say neutrally, present to you the pathways that allow students to transfer to Gainesville High School. Um, while talking about the, the Pathways to Global Citizenship program in general. So we'll be here probably uh, an hour-ish, uh, maybe a little bit less. Um, we'll do the best we can to answer questions through the Q&A feature along the way. And as ever, we're, we're, um, we're in the building five, five or more days a week. So if you have emails or phone calls that we can help with as a follow-up, you know, certainly the people in this room that can uh, help you with those. 
So without any further ado, we're gonna migrate over to um, some slides that we'll screen share and uh, we'll, we'll divide them up between us to, to talk about various features of the, the Pathways program and the, the specialty program process. And let me move out of this, there you go. So uh, obviously our first slide is just a, a welcome page. Our goals for this evening, we wanna share um, some, some specifics about the, tr the programs that allow students to transfer to Gainesville High School. There are three of them. They don't allow students to transfer from anywhere in the school system. So we'll get into some of the details, some of the course selection that, that students may be interested in. Um, one of the features of the Pathways program is that we want students to finish a pathway and, and we wanna offer students an opportunity to go above and beyond simply finishing a sequence of courses and uh, Dr. Scott, I believe, is going to get into uh, what we're describing as extended learning experiences, experiences that students can have to um, engage in authentic learning outside of the traditional classroom setting. Um, base school versus transfer school and the lottery process is, is relevant. Um, you're a base school student if you are zoned to Gainesville High School. If you are zoned to Gainesville High School and you want to participate in any of the pathways at Gainesville High School, no application needed, but you have to be zoned to Gainesville High School. If you're not zoned to Gainesville High School, you'll be considered a transfer pro, uh, program student and you would need to apply by February 1 and uh, select first and second choice the program that you're interested in mostly. And uh, we will have a lottery process um, as we'll have a limited enrollment to, to try and keep the numbers down. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go and then we'll do the best we can to respond to any, any specific questions you have. So the Pathways to Global Citizenship Program. Um, one of the features of some specialty programs is that they, they can be a little bit exclusive and uh, in doing so um, serve a, a narrow portion of the, the school population, the student body. Our goal when we opened Gainesville High School was to try to develop a specialty program that every single student in the building could participate in. So we have a number of pathways that um, any student in the building can, can select and drop into. As a freshman, we expect all of our students to select a pathway and our school counselors will work with our students to help them select um, um, coursework that meets their needs and interests as they move through this pathway a, a grouping of courses that's of interest to the student. So um, there will be specialized specialization in the sense that students will be asked to focus in on one area. Um, we'll give students an opportunity for um, additional learning outside of the classroom to, to really hone their um, research or creative talents um, that, that they're passionate about. Um, we believe that some of the features that are built into the Pathways program are gonna prepare students well uh, for college admissions. Um, the college admissions space is, is shifting. Uh, I think it's fair to say it's um, um, some of the things that were deemed important in the college admissions process five or 10 years ago, maybe are less important today and colleges are looking for well-rounded students with passions that they can clearly uh, define and demonstrate. And we believe that the Pathways program is gonna help with that. And um, we're, we're really trying to focus in on individual students' uh, needs and interests through the scheduling process so that we can um, help students find enjoyment and um, meaning behind the, the coursework that they're studying. And finally, um, global citizenship suggests that we were paying attention to issues of global significance and, and where possible, uh, positively impacting the world around us. So, um, opportunities for leadership, community service, and tying that back to um, academic learning and, and, and the issues of, uh, of, of global importance or significance. It's not a gifted program. Um, it, it's intended for every student to participate in. So here are the pathways. <clears throat> so if, if we described the, the underlined titles as the, the titles for the houses, that they're, they're ways in which we grouped the pathways. So language and culture um, has three pathways. Students can select one of those three if, if that's an area of interest. Um, engineering and math automation has three pathways. Social science and criminology two and uh, science, health and medicine three. 
Students uh, owe an independent studies and scholarship, obviously three as well. Students simply select one pathway. And um, that could be a writing and communication pathway. Students would, to complete that pathway, study four courses um, out of the selection of course offerings in that pathway. As long as students finish those four courses, um, by the end of their high school experience, they can complete the pathway. Um, in a few of the pathways, like science, math, history, and political science, we ask students to study six high school courses to complete a pathway. Um, and within those pathways, students have some choice. Um, if I'm in the engineering, design and construction pathway, I may take some project lead the way engineering coursework. I may take um, a technical drawing class and then a, a couple of years of building trades and, and immediately join the workforce in the construction industry. Or I could take some project lead the way engineering coursework, one building trades class, um, calculus based physics, and a technical drawing class. And that, that might be a great preparatory experience for me to go to engineering school to train as a civil engineer. Same pathway, different students with different needs and interests. We, we, we're intending to tailor the course offerings and selection process for individual students um, within their pathway to meet their needs and interests. So um, each of those um, pathways that we've listed here, students can select and um, uh, we'll tailor the course offerings uh, accordingly. The pathways that students can transfer to Gainesville High School are the ones with an asterisk next to them. So biomedical sciences is uh, predominantly uh, project lead the way coursework in biomedical science. So principles of biomedical science and uh, human body systems in grades nine and 10. When students get to the upper grade levels, they have some choice to take other advanced coursework like advanced biology, uh, advanced chemistry, they could take forensics. Um, so there's a little bit of choice later on, but it's, it's um, at its core, the, the thread, the common thread is starting with Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science coursework. Students in the mathematics uh, pathway should have at least completed Algebra 1 in middle school. And then the goal is for those students to go beyond calculus in high school or beyond calculus be seen in high school. So by the senior year, we're hoping that students in the math pathway will be into math courses such as uh, linear algebra um, or multivariable calculus. And then the engineering design and construction pathway is rooted in, in project lead the way engineering coursework, but ultimately leading students to the building trades curriculum uh, where students um, get into the skills and, and knowledge associated with the construction industry, uh, basic plumbing, framing, um, basic electrical, tiling, those kinds of things. So there are the pathways that, uh, that we offer in general, and then specifically the three that students can select one of to transfer to Gainesville High School. Yeah, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Pomford is gonna talk with us a little bit about the schools <clears throat> from which students can apply for transfer and how that process works. Am I up? You're right. Okay. All right. So um, we've had a couple of questions in the Q&A, and I think this may answer some of them for you. So zone Gainesville High School students, again, do not need to apply um, for any of the pathways at Gainesville High School. As long as they meet the requirements, they can do any of the pathways for which they're interested. And really, the only one with a requirement would be the math one. We do want students to have math in middle school, um, as Mr. Beach mentioned. Um, for our transferable pathways, they would choose between either mathematics, the biomedical, biomedical science or the engineering design and construction. As you can see, there are schools listed um, for the students that can apply. So if you are a zoned Brentsville High School, a Brentsville District student, your student could apply for either the math or the biomedical science. Um, the same for, um, for Battlefield, they can do math or biomedical science. You will notice, I believe we had a question in there um, about someone coming from Patriot. Patriot um, students can only apply if they wanna do the math or the biomedical science pathways. Um, so there are some limitations. Please ensure that you do have your student apply before February 1st. And I have put in the Q&A um, the link for that um, application website. We do anticipate taking between 40 and 60 students. Um, and thank you, Dr. Scott. This is the application website. This is what it looks like when you click on it. Um, it's actually a relatively easy application to do. You just click on apply now and it will take you through that process. 
Ms. Pomfrey, can I, yes. uh, can I interject? Absolutely. One of the questions was, can, can we do two pathways? Um, the simple answer is we're, we're asking students to select one. Um, if a student's in a pathway, can they take the courses associated with other pathways? Absolutely. As long as the student has room in the schedule, um, students can enroll in any of the courses they're eligible for based on prerequisites that we offer. So a student could be in an engineering pathway, but if they have an open elective slot and they want to take a gaming course in their junior year, that, that would still be on the table, it would be available. Some students, because of their course selection, may complete two pathways, but that's not the intent. It's not something we're really going to push for. Right now, we're asking students to select a pathway and then augment that pathway with other electives and course selections that are of interest to the students. This is not something that's supposed to tie down every course a student takes so they can't do anything other than the pathway. It's just helping to give, bring some focus and meaning to the course selection that students make. Um, I'm going to go back to the lottery process. Um, right now, we're projected to receive somewhere in the region of 650 freshmen next year in our freshman class. My goal is not to overfill, um, over enroll the student population at, at, at Gainesville High School. So there are trailers like we've had at several of our other schools like Brantsville, Patriot, Battlefield High School. Gainesville was built to alleviate pressure in those schools. Uh, and the goal is not therefore to have trailers um, at Gainesville High School early in our existence. Um, so if several Gainesville High School students select to transfer to uh, the Performing Arts Program or the CASIC Program or the Cambridge program at a neighboring high school can open up space in our freshman class, then we'll, we'll fill those seats with transfer students to our specialty program in the pathways. Um, the goal again is not to overfill the freshman class and then overfill the school three years from now. Um, right now we're projecting that we'll have somewhere in the region of 50 um, seats, 50 spaces that we will lottery. Um, we'll have about 30 spaces in the math program, um, somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 in uh, biomedical sciences and the construction and engineering pathway. Um, if we have more seats available, we'll certainly pull more students in from the lottery, but that's basically the process we'll use. We'll, we'll look at 50 as the ballpark uh, for the lottery process. If we have more space, we'll lottery more students. And we'll know more uh, probably around February 2nd or 3rd as to the exact number. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually, I, I'll, before we jump back to that, the, <clears throat> just as a rough timeline, um, I will have access to the current list of students who have applied for transfer into Gainesville as of Monday. That software will be available. I'll be able to, to begin the process of going through each of the applicants' information to determine if the student is eligible for the pathway in which, which or the program which they've um, you all that as families have requested um on february 1st or uh, in the neighborhood of february 1st maybe february 1st second third um because the, the 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 kelly leadership center is helping us by weeding out people who have put in multiple requests for the same for the same school will have a better sense about the, the lottery process, but the lottery process will take place over two occasions. Uh, there's the first lottery where we'll offer um, a, a slot to a, a, a student. And then there's a bit of a wait period because that offer goes to the Kelly Leadership Center. They make contact with, with you, the student and the parents, and then you have an opportunity to say yes or no. You may receive a, a, a yes, response from Gainesville High School and from Colgan High School, for example. If you choose Colgan High School, well, that leaves us with a slot that remains open, but we don't know that until, until it may be a week later. And so there will be two rounds of the lottery, which we hope to have wrapped up by the second week or so of February. Again, my email is on the last slide. If you, if you have more specific questions, you can you can certainly send those to me and I'll get back to you tomorrow or over the weekend. I'm, I'm nervous to open the Q&A on my screen because I'm screen sharing and I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not good at webinars. I'm old. And the fact that my screen is behaving is, is, is good enough. But Ms. Pomfret's going to talk a little bit more about remaining a student in good standing once you get to Gainesville. So let's press on. 
All right, so once you get to Gainesville, you've done the application, um, you are taking your transfer requirement classes as you should be. Um, you need to make sure that you are taking a transfer, um, a class that falls within your specialty, a, a required transfer class each school year. And when I'm done talking, I'm gonna put something in the chat. It's like a menu so that you can see, well, my child has transferred to Gainesville High School on the engineering design and construction pathway. What are the classes that they need to take? And there's like a menu um, that we put together for you. So I'll put that in the chat in just a moment. Um, and the school counselor and, and Dr. Scott, we're going to be working with you and checking to make sure that your child meets their transfer requirements. We don't want there to be any issues. We want to, we, if they come to us, we want them to stay with us. Um, so we will work with them on that. Um, it is also important that our students stay in good standing academically, that our transfer students are earning at least a C in all of their program courses to avoid any kind of probation. And we're never going to surprise you with that. Your school counselor, your teachers, and Dr. Scott We'll always be working with you to monitor your progress to make sure you're being successful. Um, that doesn't mean perfection. It just means that you're being successfully um, challenged and that you're, you're working through your classes. And we have, we have a couple of levels of participation that are, that are available. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail just so you, you, you have a sense about what's, what your options are. Um, first, it, it, for, for all Gainesville students, as Mr. Beach said, we want all Gainesville students to select a pathway and at least participate in the array of courses available to them so they have that sort of thematic thread that runs through the, their four-year experience. Um, that is a, a plan that any student can draft uh, with a school counselor prior to entering in ninth grade and then Again, after wrapping up 10th grade, if, if, it, if it, you know, we feel that the pathway needs to change. For, for more, uh, more involved options, and Mr. Doolin and I will talk a little bit more about these as we go, uh, to plan with one of the pathways designees. With me, Mr. Doolin, Mr. Nemero, there are a few faculty members with whom um, I, I, Mr. Mayor and Ms. Nichols, uh, Ms. Nichols, who works with the Biomed Sciences Program, Mr. Mayor, who works with Engineering Design and Construction, who couldn't be with us tonight. Any of these people, uh, there's, a, there's an array of people who, who you meet when you get to Gainesville who can meet with you about de delving deeper into your pathway or your interest areas or your advanced sort of academic interests or your creative interests or your personal interests um, in, an, in an innovative approach that we call the extended learning experiences, which we'll get to just here in, in a couple of minutes. And um, that for distinction in the pathway, we, we ask for about 40 hours of community service or, or leadership training. And we, we're trying to help students recognize that there are a lot of local projects and endeavors that, that, that do reflect um, service on, on, a, on a global level or a global perspective for a student who's maybe 15 or 16 years old. And then for an opportunity for students prior to graduation to come in and present what they've done and, and, and to defend that to sort of an academic jury like they would as, as a college student. For, for more on that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the extended learning experiences, but certainly as you, as you get to Gainesville and as you select a pathway, your school counselor or I can walk, can work you um, through some of the preliminaries of, of determining your what you might want to do for your extended learning experience. Please, though, uh, don't get too caught up in course lists and thinking that they're a menu. Uh, they're not a menu. M Mr. Beach envisioned this program as a means for students to have an individualized experience in high school, and that's what we want it to be. Um, Ms. Pomfret and the school counselors are committed to meeting and working with and, and um, helping every student have an experience that, that is esoteric to and planned for that student, which is why we have the, the independent studies sort of student proposed pathway as a last ditch. We can't get any other hat to fit your head. We've got this independent pathways uh, proposal for that rare student who is fascinated by physics, but's also, but is also a cello player who is, is determined to learn the best way to take care of fairway grass at the golf course. And we want to say yes. Um, think about your interests before you choose a pathway. You know, think about a four-year narrative. You know, like Mr. Beach said, does it, does it, is it leading to college admissions? Is it leading to the workforce? Is it leading to a particular skill? Is it leading to you 
just showcasing your skills in a, in a senior recital on the piano. Um, those are the things we want you to think about before you come meet with me or the school counselors. Come talk to us and, and don't worry too much about graduation requirements. The school counselors and I can, will, will help make sure that you're punching all those tickets that you need for graduation. Um, and with that said, I wanna talk just briefly about the extended learning experiences. Um, it, it was a couple of years ago when, and when Mr. Beach was, was talking about what American high schools could do that was truly innovative and truly different and, and would give students an opportunity to marshal the resources available in the building and in the community to have a truly different kind of an experience. And, and uh, it, took a, it took a couple of years of planning to come up with the idea of an extended or advanced learning experience for a student in 11th or 12th grade who would propose an independent experience for which that student would then be able to, to defend her work against a rubric. And we have a whole salad bar of rubrics that are appropriate for all kinds of different projects. Um, prior to graduation and then receive sort of a distinction in the pathway and honors diploma for, for lack of a, of, a, of a better term. And I, I'm, I'm going to just put up, um, uh, we, we, again, uh, and I, I'm echoing something that I said before that, you know, we, we wanted it to be something that might be uh, of personal interest to the student if it's a passion area. Advanced academics, if the student is looking at really rigorous or competitive college admissions, um, you know, you want to go to an Ivy League school or you want to get into Johns Hopkins or you want to go to Yale, well, that's an, an advanced academic experience or, you know, creativity or research. Along with that 40 hours of community service and leadership and uh, an individual sort of a rubric of, of uh, an, an array of sort of standards by which we would adjudicate and score the student's project prior to graduation. Obviously we're, we're, we're hoping for before May 15th of senior year, so we're not cramming everything in at the last minute. And just to kind of give you an idea of, of what, we, what we have in the works, um, I, I wanna just walk you through two. I'm gonna leave a list up here and you can revisit this list. And these are just things that students have done in the last few years. Uh, we have two, uh, I, I wanna talk to you just briefly about, about two, uh, one from our sort of biomedical sciences program and one that would be appropriate for our engineering design uh, program. First, this was just last weekend, literally last Friday, a student came to me Friday afternoon, and he said, Dr. Scott, could you just come in tomorrow for an hour? And I, I want to work on my biochemistry project. And I said, sure, I'll come in. And uh, we met at one o'clock in the chemistry lab. And the student, um, what he was doing was he was taking the worms and putting worms into different solutions. One was just water as a control, and then two other solutions that had a, that had a solution of nicotine. And as a school, we're only allowed to buy a nicotine in its purest form isn't just addictive. I mean, it's, it's lethal. And we as a school are only allowed to buy about 25 milliliters of, of pure nicotine. And, and what, he's, what the student is trying to do is to, is to examine uh, the time that it takes for worms to get addicted to nicotine. And then what happens if they experience withdrawal, nicotine withdrawal, like, like any cigarette smoker might experience withdrawal. And he said, Dr. Scott, I just need an hour. And I said, fine, I'll meet you. We went to the chem lab at one o'clock last Saturday. And, and at quarter past five, he came into my office and said, Dr. Scott, I just need two more hours. I said, that's not gonna happen tonight. And he said, well, I said, what, what's wrong? And he said, well, I made a slight calculation mistake. And instead of a 0.5 milliliter solution of nicotine, I used a five milliliter solution of nicotine and I've successfully murdered 33% of my worms. Um, and it's, it's, I tell you that because it, it ended up taking us four more hours on Sunday to get the project set up. And he's got 10 days of data uh, of, of getting the worms addicted to nicotine and then checking their withdrawal symptoms. And then he has the rest of the semester to write up his findings. Now that's an extended learning experience. It's outside the classroom. 
It's an area of academic interest for him, biochemistry. He wants to go to school and study chemistry. He's interested in medicine. And he, here at Gainesville High School, for hopefully what is the only time in his life, has murdered 33% of his research participants. And now, granted, they're just worms, but that's a, it was a great, great lesson for him. It was a great lesson for him to learn in this independent research setting. Um, what else is that it's, and now it's not just science. We have musicians and poets and writers and sculptors and photographers and, and, and artists, uh, students who are interested in a lot of students who are interested in things like kinesiology and nutrition and weight loss and, and exercise science. Um, I would encourage you, uh, I would encourage you when you get to Gainesville, particularly if you're a ninth or a 10th grader, find some time in the fir your first couple of years. We have people in, in each of the departments around the building who are good contact people who can work with you to, to prepare and plan your extended learning experience, but you can certainly just come and, and talk with and talk with me. I have one more that I want to talk to you about uh, that I'll share with you when we talk about the engineering uh, and design pathway here in a second. But um, arguably, the most innovative part of this program are the extended learning experiences. And it goes back several years when Mr. Beach really said, what can we do that's different? What can we do that other schools aren't doing? What can we do that any student who graduates from <clears throat> any student who graduates from this high school could walk into the University of Virginia or Virginia Tech and just drop this on the desk and say, here is something different and compelling about myself that other applicants just aren't going to have. Um, run with the football. Um, this is an opportunity to pursue academics or creativity at a level that we can't really accommodate in a classroom full of other students. And um, we've committed the staffing for it and the time for it. And um, it is, if there's a compelling reason to come and participate in the Pathways program, this is the one. Is it right for everybody? No, it's hard work, um, but it is, it is, um, it's, an, it's, an, it's a rare opportunity for a high school student. Some sample courses and electives. And Ms. Pomfret and Mr. Doolin and, and Mr. Beach and I were just gonna kind of walk through these quickly. Um, Mr. Beach has touched on a lot of what the requirements already are. And so we'll move through these kind of quickly, but, so, but just so you get an idea about what the sample courses might be. And one of the things I wanna draw your attention to as we go through are you're going to see advanced placement seminar and advanced placement research on most of these pathways. Uh, Dr. Scott, I'm so sorry in, to interrupt you. Can I add um, two quick things just before we kind of jump into the meat of the pathways? Um, students will always be working towards their graduation requirements. Um, in the state of Virginia, we are required to have them work towards their advanced or their standard diploma. Um, so any of the pathway classes that you see, these are usually, but not always, kind of associated with the elected, though there are some, and Dr. Scott will talk about in a moment, that are associated with core class areas. That's always going to happen. They, they are, excuse me, they're always gonna be focused on the graduation requirements. Also, students are going to pick their pathways. If you have a rising ninth grader, they're gonna pick their pathway when they do academic advising, when the Gainesville um, High School counselors go to the middle schools. And we're gonna start, um, it's about mid-February that we start, it takes us about two weeks that we'll work with students, students that are at Gainesville High School right now. They are gonna review their pathways with their school counselor to make sure that they're on track or do we wanna look at making adjustments when we do academic advising in February and March. Thank you, sir. Sure. No, it's a, that's okay. We're 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 going to just kind of scroll through these and, and talk briefly about these. Uh, and, and like I said, Mr. Beach has already has already talked a little bit about the requirements for a variety, uh, an array of these uh, pathways. Writing and communication, obviously, um, for students who are passionate about creative writing, creative nonfiction. Um, journalism, even photojournalism, or speech, speech and debate. Um, you'll notice AP seminar and AP research, the capstone experiences. Uh, they exist in, in each of our pathways as a sort of a capstone experience that kills a couple of birds with one stone, um, provides students with an opportunity to, to, to propose and complete an extended learning experience, but also to to be in the driver's seat for what the curriculum is over a two-year period. Um, again, going back now, 
eight years um, that um, Mr. Beach was sort of the, the champion of the AP Capstone program, even in, in Virginia, um, back at Osborne Park, we were the first school to offer the AP Capstone program. And it's it's a recent elect, there are two recent electives from, from College Board. And the nice thing about AP Seminar and AP Research is that there is no set curriculum. Um, from October to, to May in AP Seminar, the topic students research and the arguments and, and the research problems that they address are, are things that students, students choose. And students very quickly get used to sitting in a room with 25 or 27 or 28 other students, and they're all working on a different topic. And this is the reason why we have the rubrics that we have for the extended learning experiences is because it's what you're not, we don't score students based on the topic they choose. We score them on their ability to articulate using credible and relevant evidence an argument in writing and and a compelling argument that in in sort of oral argument that we that we videotape and then critique. Um, similarly, in AP Research, which is the second year, is it, it's a year long independent research project with where students are required to gather original data. Doesn't have to be a uh, inferential statistics. It can be a qualitative study. Um, I'm going to talk to you briefly about one when we get to engineering design and construction. That was a fascinating study that we had a student do last year. That those capstone classes are you notice in fine and performing arts for a student who might write a play or produce a play or might a, a study you know a, a particular artist and that artist's role in the uh, development or the evolution of a particular style of painting or sculpture in world languages and, and culture, you know, for a student who is, who's worked through, you know, advanced placement of, uh, of a particular foreign language who wants to examine um, something about that country or that culture or, you know, uh, how that culture works in our community or how that culture works in, in, an, in, in any community. Um, the, this level of independence is is inherent in those classrooms. Um, Mr. Doolin, briefly on GEMS 11 and 12 for writing and communication. Sure, so um, I'll just, towards the end of the presentation, I was gonna give an overview of, of uh, the gifted education program at Gainesville. I, I'll do that now rather quickly. Um, so gifted education, uh, we offer uh, pull-out programs and, and I'm sure there's many of you on uh, parents who have children who are in the gifted ed program or uh, any of you students who are in gifted education, uh, we offer seminars to ninth and 10th graders. And we do that through their health and PE classes. We, we uh, pull the students out and, and offer uh, signet seminars uh, to ninth and 10th graders. What's really important uh, for our gifted education students experience in high school is they have what's called a differentiated services plan. And, and our goal is to kind of connect the students' uh, passions and to challenge them academically. And that, that plan encompasses multiple uh, uh, course offerings available. And as you can see with these pathways, uh, what, what's unique uh, about the, the pathways program, if you think about this, the students have a tremendous amount of control over what they study. Uh, they have a, a autonomy. They're, they're in the driver's seat as to the direction they want to go with the extended learning opportunities. Uh, to meet the needs of, of some of our gifted education students, we offer a, a class in 11th and 12th grade called uh, uh, GEMS. Um, the, this course, or the, the, the class, it's very uh, thematic based. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a broad curriculum. Uh, we, we kind of study the, what it means to be an American, look at the American experience through different lens. Uh, GEMS 12 touches on a lot of, um, uh, you know, brings kind of a lot of philosophical arguments into play. Uh, these courses are off, offered exclusively uh, to gifted education students. It's, it's gifted education, multidisciplinary studies. And, and uh, if you are a gifted ed student, that's something come 11th and 12th grade that um, the, a lot of students, when they graduate from high school, uh, if you ask them, hey, what was one of your favorite classes you ever had in high school? Uh, a lot of them will, will, will tell you it's GEMS. So if, if, if you are a gifted education student or a parent of a gifted ed student, that's something to keep on your radar. And I do just want to echo also a AP seminar and AP research, as Dr. Scott said, are fantastic opportunities for you to do a deep dive into whatever really uh, yeah, academic area you're passionate about. Okay. 
Uh, thanks, Mr. Doolin. Um, engineering math and automation. Um, again, Mr. Mr. Beach talked with you about Project Lead the Way. Um, our uh, intro to engineering principles of engineering, uh, civil engineering, and then um, building trades. Uh, I want to just mention briefly the engineering design and um, development course uh, is is a class that just being in the course in your fourth year results in uh, an experience that would count as an extended learning experience. And this is, um, this might be engineering, landscape design, aeronautical or aviation research, GPS navigation, construction, um, golf course maintenance. Uh, we have students who are fascinated by golf course maintenance. Um, well, I had a student last year who did a project and uh, and her, her, it ended up being a project that we proposed in, in engineering, and it was examining water runoff in Prince William County. And you'd say, good grief, you know, why, why that? Well, it was fascinating. And, and if you know the movie theater in Gainesville, the, I still call it the new movie theater, the movie theater in Gainesville there by the Firebirds restaurant, there's a pond behind that, a, a small stream that runs into a little pond behind that movie theater. She took water from there. And then she examined water from the, the, the stream that runs underneath Linton Hall Road by the Linton Hall School behind the Safeway but, um, between Gainesville and Bristow. And, and what it, that may be two miles, two and a half miles between the, those, that's, and it's the same water source, it might be two and a half miles. And the, she just examined petroleum runoff and fertilizer. And the difference between those two bodies of water was staggering. Um, she ran a number of statistics just examining over a period of the year with snow melt and, and heavy rainstorms and the amount of fertilizer that we out here in these suburbs are using in, on our lawns and the amount of petroleum runoff from our, from our roads. And that's, you know, that's Sudley Manor Drive and Lytton Hall Road and, and Route 29 is really troublesome. And the third body of water she examined was the Occoquan, where that, that stream eventually ends up in the Occoquan. And her... You know, it, it ended up, you know, she's she's at Virginia Tech now and she's an engineering student and she's, you know, she's going to work on how we can better fertilize our lawns without polluting the local water source. And we say, well, is that a global project? Absolutely. Even if she manages it for one home, you know, something that then engineers could then generalized to other homes, other places, other communities, working on, to, to help control the, just the fertilizer runoff into local water supplies. This is just a, a high school student. And now she's studying engineering at Virginia Tech and, and she's brilliant and she's gonna do great things. And, and But that, that engineering design, engineering development design course results in students in their fourth year proposing classes like that. Um, coding, gaming, and robotics. Uh, and mathematics, Mr. Mr. Beach talked about mathematics, our coding, gaming, and um, robotics program. We're just getting it off the ground. Ms. Pomfret, anything else on coding, gaming, and robotics? Um, no, I do want to know the ones that are circled in yellow, those are our transferable pathways. So we've had a few questions um, in the Q&A about that. So yes, if your student transfers on one of these pathways, if they're eligible to, depending on their zone, um, their currently zoned school, they need to make sure that they take a transferable class. You will notice, however, that there is some overlap, for example, in coding, gaming, and robotics, the AP Computer Science Principles courses fit in both of those categories. So maybe your child um, applies for the mathematics pathway um, and they are interested in computer science, coding, gaming, and robotics. They can still get some of those classes. They just need to make sure that they have room in their schedule. Actually, that's a good transition to our next, our next um, uh, the conversation. I, a, a number of people have asked about criminal justice because it's, it's not a transferable pathway, but can you take criminal justice classes if you're here for example, taking biomedical sciences. And as Ms. Pomfret would echo, yes, absolutely you can. We just need to make sure that whether it is the, the principles of biomedical science or the human body systems class or, or biomedical innovations, whatever the courses that you're taking for biomedical science, um, if there's room, you can also take um, criminal justice. Global ecology, uh, we invariably, year after year, we have students who are, are especially interested, and it's a good thing. We have students who are interested in the, in the environment and interested in global warming. That's why you notice that we have a global ecology pathway and a pure science pathway. Um, they're both pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, 
trying to give students who are who are particularly interested in global warming or or cleaning up the environment that specific pathway as opposed to the pure science which similar to what mr beach said before would be six requirements um in including diversifying some of the students experiences in in ap science whether it's bio or chemistry or an ap research course that is specific to specific to science mr beach Ms. pomfort anything else on these no okay um Criminal justice. Um, I, I think I get more question. I get more email questions and phone call questions about criminal justice than anything else. And and it's and it's a, I I I love it. It's it's fun. Uh, it's fascinating stuff. And uh, if you are if as Mr. Beach said, if you're zoned for Gainesville, and you you can get into you can you can work into any pathway. Great come on in and, and take criminal justice. If you're coming here for mathematics or you're coming here for biomedical science and you have room in your schedule, absolutely, if you wanna take that criminal, ju criminal justice class, you can. The, the, the fun thing about our criminal justice program is that <clears throat> there are a variety, like Mr. Mr. Doolin was saying, a variety of lenses with which you can examine criminal justice in a man. America and uh, astrology or wealth, all of those, um, all of those are projects that that we've had in the last that I've had with students in the last eight years, just through the capstone program. So you noticed AP seminar and AP research are our options there. History and political sciences are sort of our pure history, pure social sciences um, pathway. So you notice similar to math and science, it's six. It's six classes, again, asking students to expand and diversify their experiences with advanced placement in 11th and, and 12th grade. The nice thing about the history in poli sci is that there are some advanced placement classes that students can access as early as 10th grade. Mr. Beach, Ms. Pomford, anything else here? Okay. And um, I, I like having Mr. Doolin here because Mr. Doolin, uh, on, while being our coordinator for gifted education uh, and understanding students who are passionate about interdisciplinary studies and trying to 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 fit all of it into the into 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 one four year experience, but Mr. Doolin is also a a coach of almost three decades and um, understands students who are passionate about health and wellness. And uh, so, uh, Mr. Doolin, how about it? Thank you, Dr. Scott. Uh, we, we're nearing the conclusion of our, our uh, seminar or webinar tonight. And I, I, I just wanna, if, if you're on the fence about Gainesville High School, I just wanna anecdotally just kind of share with you I, this. I, I think if you talk to any student at Gainesville or uh, any parent of a student at Gainesville and you, you ask them, hey, what, what is it like there? What, what's the culture like there? I, I think you'll hear two things. And um, as a parent of, of two recently graduated students from Princeton County Schools. These are two things I, I, I would enjoy hearing. Number one is you're gonna find a staff, you're gonna find teachers, counselors, administrators, support staff who are passionate about what they do. It, it just, you walk through the school and you, you can pick up that vibe right away. Uh, number two, you're gonna find teachers, administrators, counselors, support staff who care about students. And, and that's, uh, that, that's something that is you, you can feel in the school. And if you're, if you're uh, on the fence as to what school you end up, I, I, I will echo what Mr. Beach said that, that any school in Prince William County, uh, I, I would, it, same thing, if my two children, I would have felt comfortable sending them to any school in Prince William County, but uh, we, we do have a unique thing here at Gainesville High School. So hopefully you, you become a part of the family. Uh, to uh, to kind of close uh, things here, you can see uh, we have robust course offerings in, in if you're going the business and marketing direction or the, the health and wellness direction, uh, a wide, wide array of course offerings. Uh, Dr. Scott touched on interdisciplinary studies previously. Uh, so if we have our student, our um, celloist, who is also really passionate about physics, uh, it, it does lend a student the option to create like a, a hybrid proposal. This is not going to be the norm, it's the, the rarity, but we, 
We don't want to, uh, you know, exclude students from having control over the, their course of study. So the handful of students who this would uh, apply to, they, they would uh, propose uh, after their sophomore year an interdisciplinary studies program. And this could also be a catch all net for a, a handful of students who maybe come junior or senior year want to switch gears. Just as if, if you're in college and you're a, a senior and you switch your major late, uh, we want to have a vehicle through which you can, you can do that. So interdisciplinary studies could also provide that option if somebody kind of late in their, their academic planning wants to go a different direction, we could get a little creative with that there. Um, and yeah, and just before we wrap up, um, just to reiterate, uh, as I said before, I, I had a meeting with, um, with Ms. Wesselhoff at the Kelly Center today. I will have access to all of our applicant files as early as Monday. If you haven't applied yet, uh, um, please, you need to have the application completed before February 1st, but just because you haven't applied yet does not mean that you're at the bottom of the, of the, the, the pile. Please don't worry about that. All of the applications that we receive by February 1st will go through the same sort of adjudication process up front. Um, and then for students who qualify for the lottery will be in the lottery. I'm not able to see uh, I'm only able to see that students elected Gainesville. I'm not able to see the other schools that you may have selected. Therefore, I won't know the other schools that you may receive an offer to attend until um, that first round of offers goes out, which will be, I'm betting probably February 4th, 5th, 6th. That puts us in a position at Gainesville to be well into the second week of, of February before we wrap up the second round of, of our lottery to ensure that we, we have filled all the slots that Mr. Beach makes available. I will also, just as a, as a caveat, mention that one of the reasons that the, the, the school board and the superintendent staff does support for, for, um, for us to, to turn students away really is just there aren't enough seats. Uh, Mr. Beach mentioned it. Um, so if you do get a, a, an email from Ms. Wesselhoff noting that you've been denied a slot at Gainesville, that doesn't mean that you weren't academically um, eligible for the program. It just, we do, we will get to a point where we just don't have enough seats. And that is, that is um, probably, uh, probably um, will be, one of the reasons that we that we we as particularly if we see a, a, a spike in applications in the next week. Right now we have about 140 applicants for what we're guessing is about is about 50 slots. And um, I will kick it back to Mr. Beach. Uh, or well, before we do that, uh, Ms. Pomfret, Mr. Doolin, anything else? I, I do want to stress, and you've mentioned this a few times, really. Um, I know it can be stressful. Um, you know, I have a, a rising ninth grader myself this year to feel like we're asking you to pick um, a pathway to pick your child's future. That's not what we're asking. Um, Dr. Scott mentioned in the beginning it focusing on your students' interests and, and please really do that and know that your students' interests will change and that's totally fine too. We have very good school counselors who can help guide your student um, through the academic advising and post-secondary planning process. Um, so please, as, as they're making this choice, know that there are opportunities to pivot and change. Um, and we, we want to work with your child to be able to do so. Thanks. Mr. Beach. So again, thanks for being here, everybody. I'm, I'm going to reiterate a couple of things. Uh, reminders of clarification one, every one deadline, it's the online ap application form. Please try to take care of that application in advance if you're a transfer student too. If you're a, a base school uh, student, i.e. zoned to Gainesville, um, you simply meet with your school counselor in the, um, in the next couple of months and your Gainesville High School school counselor will advise you as to um, the coursework that's available and, and help you select the pathway to drop into. Um, third, the three pathways, math, biomedical sciences, uh, engineering and construction, and, and just to simplify the concept of a pathway, for, for most of our pathway students simply take four classes um, associated with that pathway through high school, 
um, to complete the pathway in a couple areas of six classes. And then they'll have the opportunity to do some community service and extended learning um, experience in addition to that. that. That is the program. It's four classes or six classes, depending on the pathway, plus some community service and extra learning outside of the classroom if you choose to do it. We've, we've made it intentionally simple and, and achievable so that students can still um, experience other high school coursework or areas of interest. I just wanted to sort of boil it down to the most simple concept for, for folks to, to take away and discuss. Um, you know where we are. Uh, if, you, uh, if you want to get in touch with us, please feel free to reach out to us at, at, the, at the high school by email or phone. Um, I believe we're going to post a recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel, probably middle of next week. Dr. Scott, will the, will the slide, um, slide deck be posted on our Pathways webpage also? Yes. Okay. Yep. So the slides from tonight will also hit the Pathways to Global Citizenship um, sec section of our uh, Gainesville High School webpage. Again, next few days, probably uh, middle, middle to end of next week, maybe by the time we get it there. That's all we have for tonight. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Dr. Scott, Mr. Doolin, Mrs. Pomfret. Uh, back to school tomorrow. Have a good Thanks, evening. Thanks, folks.